Hello, beautiful souls. I will be doing your July energy forecast via an oracle card reading for today. As you know, there has been a ton of geomagnetic storms, solar storms, solar flares, um, very wonky matrix. <laughs> it's crumbling all around us. If you don't see it, you have some work to do. You're still believing the narrative. You have some work to do. There are lots of truths being told in this now moment, and it has not everything to do with government. It has some things to do with government, but it also has a lot of galactic truth, divine truth, um, truth about our history that we were not told. Lots of things are coming forward at the same time all over the world. So let's dig in and see what the energy has to say. I'll be right back. So for today's reading, I was guided to use the energy oracle. This is a, it's not a new deck that I've had. I just don't only get permission to use it, but I have been receiving permission lately. So interesting. You'll also get a message from the cosmos toward the end. Sacred forest deck. It's definitely geared toward our fairy folk, but also anyone can get in guidance from it. Keeper of the Light, Kyle Gray. Definitely a fan of Kyle Gray's work. And Beyond Lemuria, Izzy Ivy. One of my favorites. Uh, my lineage is mostly Lemurian. And so I definitely resonate with this, as do most of the population, I have to say. So let's see what we get. Remove all negative energy from this deck. I just recently charged and cleared all my cards and set everything out so that all the beautiful energies coming in, whether it be solar or lunar, are helpful. If you don't do that with your cards, I recommend putting them in uh, one, two, 50, three, whatever type deck you have. So numerical order. And then you can set them in the box, the box out in the windowsill or outside for 30 minutes or so, set the intentions to clear, cleanse, and recharge with the energies. Calling on the angels, the archangels, the ascended masters, guides, soul emissaries, what is the now moment message tapping into the energy for the collective for July 2024. Going forward, 30 days, all of July. Show us what we need to see, hear, feel, think. Use our discernment in all things. Okay, is this card for the collective? Is this card for the collective? All right, we're good to go on that. Walking away. Absolutely important right now. So it reminds me of a different card in a different deck called the Great Severing. And it's basically that we are detaching from the matrix. We're detaching from the narrative that no longer serves us. We are detaching from the energy vampires. We are recognizing that what they've been doing, we understand that they've been stealing our energy and our light for however long we've been around them and had associations with them or chose to exchange our energy with them. And so walking away is something we're all called to do in this now moment. And that means walking toward what serves you and walking away what no longer serves you. It's truly that simple. Yes, it can be more complicated. I'm simplifying it greatly. But as you detach from the matrix, you have to you have to also walk away from it. You have to distance yourself and not continue to attach energetically, exchange your energy 
or reattach cords because then you have done nothing. You can physically be in a different place of the planet, but the energetic cord is in place and therefore they can still siphon your energy. So it has to be a severing. The temple path. This has come up quite frequently. And what this is saying is the path is not rainbows and butterflies. The path is full of, you know, hills and valleys. And the goal is that you navigate the path knowing that at the end, when you go through it, then the temple at the end is your golden age of miracles, right? It's your 5D life. It's your 5D self. It's your higher consciousness. It's your unity consciousness. It's your Christ consciousness at the end. Okay. You won't get there unless you do the soul growth, unless you do the shadow work, unless you do the walking away that is required to take your power back and regain your sovereignty. The world. The world right now, I will speak on things that I am also receiving guidance about and have been for a very long time. The world has shifted. Okay, we're at the end of a 25,000 year cycle that is a planetary cycle of ascension. So the planet is a is a souled being and that soul has ascended over the 25,000 year cycle. We're at the end of that. So the planet's doing this and it's the first time in existence of humanity being on this planet that we ascend as a population with her. Now, Many beings on this planet are playing catch up because they have been so entrenched in the matrix. But when they begin to do this, walk away and detach, and they start down this soul growth, shadow work journey, and they understand that there's so much more in nature. There's so much more within us than we, we can gain from any AI or any type of device or any type of technology or any type of other um, infrastructure system, we find our power, we remember who we are, and that changes the frequency. And it's the frequency that allows for the ascension of the planet and the people. The collective consciousness of the planet is well over 25,000. We have done fabulous work and in doing so we birthing the new planet Huna Matea is the official name for the 5d planet and she is in existence and the, the consciousness frequency that we have right now is fifth dimension so you just got to decide to get on board indecision <laughs> can't make this up okay the card number is eight infinity right turn it this way infinity symbol we are from a planet of duality light versus dark good versus bad me versus you myself or others service to self service to others duality in all things right but when we decide to detach from that way of thinking and understand that we're truly all one coexisting on one planet, then we drop the indecisiveness and we truly aligned to the divine, which is in the center. The divine is neutral. It's a balance. There's good and bad and all that's recognized. That's why there's forgiveness. That's why there's love. That's why there's gratitude. When you align to that, then there's a whole lot less me versus them and a whole lot less um, light versus dark and good versus evil, because we understand that that hurt souls hurt other souls and they too deserve and need love, forgiveness and gratitude. And then we understand that our hurt souls can heal and stop this cycle of karma and end it from perpetually going forward. So we are changing the perspective, the trajectory, 
and the overall collective consciousness of the entire planet. When you are staying indecisive and cannot decide which way to go, it's because you need to get centered. I love this card because it gives you a really good uh, visual representation where if you're truly wanting to embody Christ consciousness and unity consciousness, you're not left and you're not right. You're centered in Christ. You're centered with the divine. And therefore you're guided through a love space, a heart space, a space that is forgiving and a space that is compassionate and kind. July is going to be a very, very powerful, uh, pivotal month for the evolution of our planet and the evolution of our people that is coming through very, very strongly. We will now use Keepers of the Light. So this has some Ascendant Masters. This has some um, Spirit Guides. Remove all negative energy from this deck or call in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, soul guides, soul emissaries, planetary guides, planetary emissaries. What is the now moment message for the collective for July of 2024 going forward 30 Earth days? Is this for the collective? 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 Okay. Diana. Focused intention. Think about what you desire. Set your sights high. Expect the best possible outcome. This is Diana, goddess of the hunt. And she's revered for being decisive. The exact opposite of this card. Okay. She's known for knowing exactly what is in the highest and best of not only herself, but those around her, those in her vortex. Helping to guide in a way that is from a a place of neutrality, but also a place of sovereignty. And fear is no, fear does not play a role in it other than vanquishing the fear, right? Because when we face our fears, we're able to realize our, our desires. Desires are usually kept at bay because of the false evidence appearing real that it is not for you to do. And that comes from the ego and which is fear. It's not real. Don't buy into it. So dig deep down within yourself discern what is in your highest and best good, set your sights on it and put your energy toward it. Where you feed your energy is what will manifest for you. So if your energy is feeding fear or your energy is feeding dis indecisiveness, that's what you're going to have more of. You're going to have more things that provide you with more fear and more issues that come up that you feel you cannot make a decision about. Mercury open communication, get the weight off your chest, speak up with love and be heard. This definitely comes into play when you're in the act of doing this. Okay. Now there's a million different ways to walk away from a bad situation. There's a million different ways to walk away from a person, place or thing that no longer serves you. It is in your highest and best good um, to speak your truth to those, those beings involved that they don't, they, they not left feeling that they did something that upset you and you left because you were triggered or you have issues or you're crazy or any of that. You want to leave in your sovereignty and your integrity. You want to clearly say this, whatever this is, fill in the blank no longer serves me because I've done work on myself and I no longer subscribe to A, B, C, D, whatever. What works for me is not engaging with this. And so therefore I choose not to. So this is a conscious effort. I'm, I leave you with love and blessings, but I am going a separate direction. Be clear, be in your integrity, but also speak your truth. It is a 
collective issue that most beings do not feel comfortable speaking their truth because of the culture we have had to exist in that wants to cancel you, attack you. They want you, you know, like they disagree with you. And so they want to completely end your life. They want you to have no income. They want you to have um, no safety, no security. Like it's completely insanity. And so um, there is a, a bit of trepidation and, and fear that people do have to overcome to understand that speaking your truth frees you and it's not up to you what happens to the people that receive your truth but it's out there and that gives you the sovereignty that takes your power back and it and it restores integrity where if you're just quiet and you withhold the truth of you and what you feel and how you believe inside that actually manifests as trapped energy and can have negative effects on your body so there's a ton of people that have chronic throat issues, vocal cord issues, thyroid issues. And when you, when I get to talking to them, it's because they've held in their truth for their, basically their entire life. They've never spoke what they truly think, feel, and believe to anyone. And over a lifetime, of course, that's going to cause issues. El Moria, Awakening Presence. The universe is with you. Wear a cloak of protection and love. El Moria is a huge energetic presence. And uh, one of the things he's, he's known for many, but one of the things that he can do for you in your life is to help you um, with protections, shielding you from psychic attack, negative energy attack. And if you're really in this moment, where you're going to speak your truth with love and integrity, but you want to do your protections, call in El Moria. El Moria can help protect you in a way that you really don't need to know all the ins and outs, uh, but is very super effective. It's divine and it is is powerful. When his energy comes in for me, I get a little uh, heart palpitations and I feel a little dizziness because it's such a strong energy but very loving. And um, he definitely is one you want to have along your awakening journey because um, the love is huge, but so is the protection. Equal amounts, love and protection. Dwell cool, dharma unfolding. Remember that you are on a path. Take one step at a time to happiness. And most people, Western culture, I would say, are missing the fact that we have ended the karmic cycle and we are now in the dharmic cycle. And what does that mean? Karma is a reaction to an action, a cause and effect, right? And dharma means before I act, I'm going to check in with my energy and see if this is for me or not. So that's why when it says take one step at a time to happiness and be on your path, when you fully embody that we're in a dharmic cycle, what that looks like is using myself for an example, I'll say my higher self, is it for me to do blah, blah, blah. This could be something that I, I typically have done frequently or weekly, daily, whatever it is. That day, it may not be for me to do it. And me honoring that honors the Dharma, honors the Dharma energy and the Dharmic cycle. And then I further ask, what is for me to do today? What is for me to give my energy to today? And then I honor that on the path. So it's like the, the steps on the path get lit up with guidance if you check in. But if you don't check in, everything stays looking the same. So this is a, another aspect of spiritual growth where we understand that we are being led, but you have to allow the, the, the guidance to come in in one way or the other. I'm going to move these up a little bit so I can have more room because I am doing a four deck reading. Now we will move on to Sacred Forest. Denise Lynn is the author creator and it's got really beautiful artwork here and since the majority of the collective is of the fey realm most people really enjoy it 
clear all negative energy from this deck. I call in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, the fey realm guides and emissaries. What is the now moment message for July 2024? So going forward 30 Earth days. This is a collective message for July 2024. Is this for the collective? 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 Okay. Forest Temple Enlightenment. Can you see the similarities there, right? I love it when there's a synchronicity of message between decks. So completely different deck, same message, almost identical. Um, artwork as well and so again we achieve that enlightenment state once we go through the soul growth and that's the shadow work that's the detaching of what no longer serves you and going and aligning toward what does serve you and discerning the difference and how it makes you feel so your focused intention should be every single day to be in your integrity integrity, and speak your truth to regain your power and your sovereignty while being protected by El Moria and speaking from a love space, but also checking in with your Dharma. Is this for you to do? You could have been preparing to do something on Wednesday of next week for a long time. And Wednesday morning may come and you may check in and your higher self may say, this is not the day. We'll check back tomorrow. This is not the day. Check back the next day. This is the day. It's just an energetic check-in of what is in your highest and best good to engage with on that moment. So when you can um, adjust your day-to-day -day routine to understand that each and every day, you really need to go through the process of clearing your energy addressing anything that's not clear, understanding your triggers are leading you to your shadow work, process of going through your shadow work, using discernment, focusing on the, the clear intention that you have for doing the work, staying open-hearted in your integrity, speaking your truth, and following up with your dharma to know this is for you to engage in today. It may be like you want to do six things today, but your dharma is saying it's only for you to do two accepting that you can put those other four to the side because it's not in your highest and best good. So that is a clear separation from how the matrix tells us to work, right? Because we're told to make lists and agendas and calendars and schedule, 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 and sk stick to the schedule. And if you have time for anything else in there, fill it up with something else, right? But that's not providing a culture or it's not providing an opportunity for soul growth because you are too pulled in many 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 different directions to tune into your own being and know that you are on the right path that is why we have been such a busy culture to keep us from focusing on ourselves and focusing on the messages coming through to us which is our guidance down our path so you really have to commit in a very clear way that you're ready for the change and you're going to embody the change because you understand at the end of that very long journey is enlightenment. And when you reach enlightenment, of course, that is where the celestial, the galactic, the divine, the, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, all of it comes together in a beautiful tapestry of unity consciousness where Every living being gets love, forgiveness, gratitude. Every living being gets compassion, kindness, empathy. And that energy is a common goal working toward the same clearly intended golden age of miracles. Willow spirit of flexibility. Another aspect that is super hard. And I'm going to, I'm going to touch on my, my Fey realm collective as a trait, a space race trait, a galactic race trait, a, a alien trait, if you want to call it that, a creature trait, they realm are super scattered. Okay. They, but they also like structure. 
So they'll focus on many different things. They spread their energy out over many, many, many different things. And as long as they know what's expected of them, like you can legit tell them, I want you to do these 50 things today and every day for the next 30 days, they're going to do them because it gives them structure and they will show up and do go point A to point B and point B to point C and point C to point D and then interject myself. And I come in and I go, well, this is why you're feeling so drained. And this is why you have no idea who you are because you're too busy making sure everything else is done for all these other beings, but you have not checked in with yourself. And they recoil because the, the idea of creating their own space or having space that's not programmed and, and scheduled out to the minute freaks them out. There is a lack of flexibility. There's a lack of self-worth. There's a lack of self-compassion and a lack of self-confidence. So how do they overcome that? By scheduling out their life every single day, every single minute, every single hour. And that keeps them in an artificially uh, induced focus. So they're not focused on what they should be focused on by and large because they're giving all their energy away, right? So we're asking, this card is saying, fairies, please be flexible to change because it's that change that will allow you to then walk away from is what is not serving you, what has been stealing all your energy and taking all your power. And it is what will allow you to find the temple. Without flexibility, it's going to be pretty impossible to find your way down this path. Elves playfulness. Again, when we are always doing what the, the matrix wants us to do, does it really leave a lot of space and time for joy and bliss and playfulness? You know how many times I've heard, just be serious. This is a serious thing. Like there's no playing here in my life. And I thought, well, if I, if I lose my sense of humor, I mean, my life should, my, should be over because it's what's getting me through and dolphin energy, fairy energy, elven energy. It's very therapeutic and that you can help heal and reconnect to your inner child. When you allow yourself time to play, don't be so serious. Okay. Don't be so serious. There's so many different supportive roles in your life you're not even aware of they're helping you and guide you and you do have permission to play you have permission to stop and smell the roses you have permission to sit in the grass and look up at the stars look up at the sun look up at the moon proclaim the shapes and ships that you see in the clouds it is for you to do you have my permission phoenix transmutation and what does this tell you? So energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed. Our energy bodies are at a state where they have been transforming because of the end of the 25,000 year cycle and all of the things that occur at the end of those cycles, which are high levels of solar activity, CMEs, geomagnetic storms, and all these things affect our energy body because they too are energy. Energy attracts energy. So as we have transformed on a cellular level, a DNA level, we are also being asked to allow our physical and our mental, our spiritual and our emotional bodies to transform along with the planet. Transformation literally is endings and beginnings, which definitely aligns to this card. Ending of an old world, beginning of the new world. You have to allow that to happen. Transformation and rise up from the ashes. So when you're dealing with things and you're not sure how to fully work through them. There's two big things that have worked for me and has worked for those that I help guide very effectively. Number one, write. And I don't mean write from your mind. I want write from your heart, write from your energy and just, just journal it out. Whatever the event is, just let it flow onto the page. At the end of that, that first draft is going to be fully charged with emotion and energy 
and probably things that you really don't want to say to the person, place, or thing. But you want to get it out, and you do, because you want to speak in open and clear communication, taking your power back and integrity. Once you have it out, part of a big black X over that page and send it into the flame to be transformed and transmuted. So you'll burn it and say, I'm transforming this pain. I am transforming this frustration. I am transforming my anger into love, forgiveness, and gratitude. The next phase of that is then the next time you start to journal and write, you will go back to revisit that, that event. But in this time, you're going to name three things that you can send love about the person, place, or event. Three things of forgiveness about the person, place, or event. And the three things of gratitude about the same person, place, or event. And if there's still some trepidation in there, put a big X through it, send it to the flame. I like to say violet flame all the ways, but fire is transmutation in itself. It's changing of energy. It's changing of structure. Burning that and setting your intentions, your clear intentions, that you want to transform all the negative energy to positive energy. Then next time you go about journaling how you feel, the feelings are going to have evolved because you are going to have released it and transformed it. It's very therapeutic and I highly recommend it as a way if you feel stuck on trying to address a, a trauma, a pain, a shadow in your being, that is definitely one way that you can go about it. Now we will go to Beyond Lemuria. Remove all negative energy from this deck. Ooh, just fell out. Calling on the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, our Lemurian guides and soul extensions, past life experiences. What is the July 2024 energy forecast? On Lemurian calendar is six months ahead of the calendar that we function on in this in this culture. So when I ask for and receive guidance from Lemurian cards, I really look at it as a bigger window of time because of the differences there. Hold on. I... messed up my deck give me just a moment I did a impromptu reading last night and I was so tired but I did it and I did not put my cards back in there exactly straight okay now we're good if a card comes up inverted or reversed on its own, great. But I don't want it to be because I had the cards in there inaccurately. Okay. What is the collective message? July energy 2024. This for the collective. This for the collective. Is this for the collective? Is this for the collective? Okay. Sacral chakra, core of creation. And this can simply mean as a collective of our culture, we are uh, vastly underappreciating the the amount of co-creation energy and power we have we hold the ability to co-create our reality in any way shape or form we choose that takes doing work to clear out the limiting beliefs that get trapped in the sacral chakra where you feel like you don't have the power to do that this is a taking your power back moment 
So you're going to just take a moment. You can look up all the things that are embodying in the sacral chakra and see how it resonates with you. Where do you find that you have weaknesses? Where do you think that you have some triggers that need to do some shadow work and opening that up to enable you to realize that you too are a co-creator. You do not need permission from a government, from a county, from a person to co-create your reality. It is within, it's within you and it always has been. Beyond the mind. Yes. We are asked to get out of our heads because the heads are the most manipulated organ in our body. Speak, think, sense, feel, act from a heart space instead of a head space. Because the head is going to be driven by the ego the egoic mind and consciousness that is telling you it's not possible or it's not for you or who do you think you are or all these things that are low vibration. But the connectivity of the heart space to, to the divine and to yourself in a way that allows input to the heart chakra and sending out from the heart chakra is going to show you in ways that your mind cannot understand because it's limited. The energy of the heart space is infinite, not limited, the exact opposite. So get beyond the mind. And there's another, there's another card, you know, trust your intuition before it makes sense. Our intuition is not, they cannot mess with it. Okay. They can mess with our mind. They have been messing with our mind. It's, it's, it's proven fact that they bombard us with a lot of information so that we think and feel what they want us to. Getting out of our mind allows us to think, feel, sense, believe, and engage with true energy, the truth of things, whatever that may be. Get out of your mind. Journey to wholeness. This is a beautiful card. It shows a lot of connectivity in realms where she's literally under the water but connect it to earth, right? Water has memory. Water has energy. Water is life. Journey to wholeness means that we're not excluding any element. We're inviting in earth, air, water, fire, love, ether. We want to be whole. We want to call back the soul fragments that have been trapped. We want to take back our energy and regain our sovereignty. The journey to wholeness is healing the inner child, allowing the divine feminine to rise, allowing to uh, diminish the over-exaggerated divine masculine characteristics because we have been in a fight or flight mentality our entire existence. Understanding that balance in all things leads us to the journey of wholeness. That's like the, the ultimate shadow work card like you want to do your shadow work so you can become whole again soul star chakra merging with the divine the soul star chakra is just above your crown and for most of the collective i would say that there has been enough um, solar energy divine energy space race energy even that has come in to help open the soul star to help connect to the divine and the galactics, but the soul star specifically helps you really attune your higher self to the, your energy core all the way down and up. So uh, all the way up to source, all the way through the soul star, the, the crown, the heart, all the way through your prana tube down into earth star chakra that is connecting your pillar of energy, that column of light. It is integral to knowing and receiving your guidance. And it is the ultimate connection that you should strive for, in my opinion, as you're going about your soul evolution. We're going to see what the, the message from the cosmos is now. Message for the collective going forward. 30 days for July, 2024. What is the overall message? This is the message for the collective. 
clear your mental and physical clutter, you will feel so much better. This is a good wrap up for this reading because this reading has been all about taking your power back, right? So whenever you fully activate, embrace your connection to your higher self, your soul star chakra into the divine. So that's your divine guides, your, your angels, your archangels, your ascendant masters, source creator, mother Sophia. That's what I'm talking about. That's whenever you start to realize how large your energy field is and how infinite your your energy field is and you start to feel the growth that is so much larger and infinite than what your mind has ever allowed you to imagine whenever you start to realize that the confidence and the the empowerment that comes back to you because you realize it's been within within you the entire time and as you've worked through things you have risen into your power you've reborn that phoenix because you remember it how much fun your inner child is and how freeing that is to just have some time to play and enjoy life and not always be answering to the calendar. So you're going to tap back into the flexibility of doing things for you first. Service to self in moderation is going to help you heal. You will feel things you haven't felt in a long time because you haven't given yourself time to do so. But as you do that, that is how you navigate the path to enlightenment. When you're on this journey, you definitely want to check in for your dharma, asking your higher self, is this in, for me to do today? Is this in my highest and best good today? As you're speaking your truth, you want to call in extra shielding and protection through love of El Moria so that the sovereignty that you speak about, even when it's from a love space, it's going to get some pushback. You're going to get some triggers from those that have been taking advantage of you and stealing your energy. That should not make you any less focused on your goals and your intentions. And you still knock the fear to the side and understand that your desires will set you free in a co-creation way that allows you to step out of being indecisive and being very centered and very grounded. And that you know without anyone else's approval that this is for you because the world is changing it's doing that whether you step on board or not as a planet and we want you on the path of the temple on the path of enlightenment in order to do that you have to be willing to walk away you got to be willing to leave the things that have made you feel crazy and disconnected and overwhelmed and underappreciated and disempowered and not loved and embrace all the opposites. Remember, clear your mental and physical clutter and you will feel so much better. I hope you've enjoyed this July energy forecast for 2024. If you would like a reading, please reach out to me. You can email me or drop me a message at the bottom of this video. Have a great day.